Hey guys, Kaiser here. I'm going to finally do a little tutorial on how to set up and use the market dashboards. So first things first, we are going to want to create a dashboard. So what you want to do is start by clicking here and go ahead and you're going to input your values. Um, I am just doing, let's just say, um, I don't know, 1111 country road. I'm just making up address here. Um, actually, let's do Gatlinburg, and let's say, oh geez, I don't know, three seven three zero eight. I don't know, whatever. And then for country, United States, and radius. It doesn't really matter what our radius is right now. We can change this later. Um, for a place like Gatlinburg, I think two would be just fine. And then continue. And you want to verify your location. This is going to be a radius. Make sure you're okay with it. And then you can continue. And then at this point, if I wanted to actually pay for this market, I don't because I already have the Gatlinburg market set up. So I'm going to skip this. You could choose um, to generate the dashboard. Now, let's say you do a bigger radius where your place has more listings nearby. When you go to generate the dashboard, you'll have an extra option to choose up to 5,000 listings. Um, for, according to Price Labs, you don't really need 5,000 listings to generate a good amount of data. Um, 10 kilometers is pretty far out from whatever address you choose, so I probably would just stick to doing a thousand listings with a smaller radius. You can see in the radius there is over 4,000 listings there, but again, we're going to end up dropping our radius down. Let's do that to two. Actually, we'll just cancel out of this. Let's pretend I generated the dashboard, I've paid for it, now we're at this screen. It's going to take five to ten minutes to generate, so. Um, go hang out, go do something else, and then come back in a little bit, refresh the screen, and see if you're good to go. If you are good to go, then you can go ahead and go to Show Dashboard. If ever you want to cancel your subscription, you can only do it at the end of the month. Once you buy it, you have it for the month. But you would just go over here to Cancel, um, or you would go here to toggle this switch. It'll, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, you, it, don't do that if, unless you want to cancel it. But that's how you would cancel and turn it back on. So. Let's go ahead and show dashboard. And we're gonna go ahead and break this down a little bit. Give it a couple seconds. It is gonna take a little while to generate the data. Okay, so the data is generated. And first thing you wanna do is probably start with copying out a property you're already looking at. So let's say you know you wanna get this five bedroom house. I might go one above and one below or maybe just keep it at five if you really want to. But for today's sake, I'm going to stick to between four and six. I'm going to apply the filter. And narrow down the data a little bit. So now that we've narrowed down the data a little bit, uh, I'll go ahead and break down what all of these mean later. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll get there. So first thing we're going to look at is listing map and comping sets. We're going to want to narrow down the area that we're looking at. So we can go ahead and zoom in. These are going to be all your listings. This is a cool little map. Let's say you know that your property is this one. Then what you can do is, or let's say you're just interested in this one. Go ahead and click it, and it'll send you directly to that listing. Let's go back. And we're back to our page. So let's say I know that I want to check out these neighborhoods. Maybe go on to a satellite map view somewhere and see what this looks like or ask a realtor and talk about what kind of area you would be, you should be comping yourself against. But go ahead and let's just uh, say, for the sake of this, this much space. Now let's say you want to get all the neighborhoods in here, but you don't want to be across this road and you don't want to be, I don't know, anywhere over here. So what we can do is kind of hard to see, but let's just go to this tool right here lasso select and that's going to allow you to just draw an area that you want to pull data from and it'll only include the data in that area now it's going to apply the filter not to any of the numbers up here but to the data down here now this is our comp set these are going to be all of the listings that are going to be within the range that you set up here uh, you have listing id you can, again, get a direct link to a listing in question. And then you can see, since we narrowed it down to rooms, um, 
it's showing all of the four bedroom first. If we, uh, if we skip forward a few pages, it would move on. Um, we're gonna go ahead and narrow that down a little bit more uh, in a second. Um, what they're all rated at, the reviews, the price. I like this a lot, the occupancy. And so let's say you want, you know, you want to have a really good occupancy. Um, look at this one says 92%. So let's go ahead and open that. And we go, okay, maybe when we want to reverse engineer this property, maybe we want to consider what are they doing? What are they doing in the titles? Check out the reviews. Um, you can tell that it's property managed by Volve. They're a pretty popular property management company. And you get the idea. We're not gonna go ahead and compare a property right now, but let's say that's what you wanted to do. That's probably the way I would start. Um, you can also see that they're charging $902 a night and grossing 136 k That's pretty darn good. So this would be definitely a property you wanna keep in the back of your pocket. Now, um, I'm not gonna go ahead and break down what all of these are. You can tell that they're using uh, dynamic pricing if they're on here. So surprisingly enough, this 136 k one isn't even using dynamic pricing that much. Interesting. Anyway, let's say you want to look at more data. You can you can go ahead and just choose which one of these you're interested in. So let's say you know you're going to allow pets. So we can do the pets allowed. You only want to compare yourself against other properties that allow pets. And you know that uh, you are going to have a hot tub at the property. So we can select hot tub. And then let's go ahead and just do, let's do one more. Professionally managed. That's a good one. Okay. So suppose we wanted to only do properties with hot tubs. We can go up here. You'll see once you hover your cursor over this column, this is the filter data column, then you're going to go ahead and be able to customize this quite a bit. So let's say you only want to see properties with hot tubs, then you're going to write equals yes, and then press enter, and then it's going to filter it out, filter it out. Likewise, you can write equals no, and then it'll show you only the properties that don't have hot tubs. Interestingly enough, this property right here is grossing 190K per year um, at a four bedroom, and all, it doesn't even have a hot tub in Gatlinburg. I thought most of the higher grossing properties there have them, so good for them. Um, the three minimum, anyway, cool. So let's go ahead and go back to the properties that have hot tubs. And let's say you don't want it to be property managed. You want to come can you want to compare yourself against other properties that are just like you. So we're gonna go ahead and write equals individual. And in case you're wondering what you might have to type in here, just scroll through here, scroll through and see which ones you want to have. So equals individual, enter. And now we're comparing ourselves only against property that have individual. Um, that are individually operated. Let's go ahead and back out actually and not even worry about that. And let's do something we might be more interested in. Let's do revenue. Let's say in order to make this property work, you have to gross, I don't know, 100K per year. Jeez, 1 million, that'd be cool. Um, let's write not equals to, it's not gonna work for this one. Only properties that are grossing more than $100,000 per year. How did I just had it right? Okay, press enter. And now we're comping ourselves against these ones. Now we only want the ones that have above a, let's see, and these are all pretty good, above a 4.9 rating. I did it again. Above a 4.9 rating. Wow, really struggling tonight. Okay, above a 4.9 nine rating enter cool obviously didn't get rid of a whole lot i think it only got rid of the one that whose rating wasn't available and but now we can say we want ones that are already pre-established so this is i don't know if i would filter any more than this but you can tell this is the obvious standout right here so they moderately use dynamic pricing they uh, if they properly manage they don't manage it very much they do have a hot tub they don't allow pets that's interesting and then they're charging 500 dollars a night 4.9, cool, that's a good property to look at. Okay, now suppose you know that you're gonna wanna look at this comp set later. So what I would do is go to create comp set up here, and you're gonna wanna make sure all of these are selected. If they're not all selected, then go ahead and just select all right here. And then you're gonna wanna title the comp set. So let's say, 
mm, what, what did we filter out? Um, I don't know. You can come up with a, an official name. We're going to write really, really good listings in Gabby Town. All right. Kind of lame. Whatever. Let it go ahead and generate the comp set. And it's going to save all those filters. You can go ahead and confirm. And then now you can access that filter anywhere. So let's say you go to the Airbnb whole market. Um, that's, that's what we're on right now. You can see that we're back to getting terrible, terrible places, um, places with low revenue. We want to go back to looking at our old filter. Go, really, go down and you're, you'll find Airbnb comp, really, really good listings, Caddy Town, right? And we're back. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Kazu, what if I want to check out an Airbnb market? So unfortunately, you can't check both Airbnb and Verbo markets at the same time, but you can choose one or the other. So let's say you also want to look at Verbo markets later. So go ahead and select Verbo, apply the filter. Give it a second. And let's say we want to filter it again. So let's write, uh, let's do this time. The price has to be more than $200 a night. Press enter, greater than uh, 200 USD per night and generate comp set. And then you should be able to go down here and see your new comp set. I'm not, oh. No listing is selected. Oh, but don't forget. Come down here, select all, journey comp set. Now you should be able to get it. Here we go. Boom. Okay, there are a few things that I want to show you guys. So let's go ahead and go back to our Airbnb really, really good listings in Gaddy Town comp set and go ahead and apply it. Some questions you might be asking yourselves are, what days should I expect to start booking things? So if you go here to price and occupancy trends, you can see in Gatlinburg, people are booking uh, in late November, so around Thanksgiving time, right? It's They're seeing a large increase in, in occupancy. So people are starting to book up these dates. Uh, same with um, just before Christmas and uh, New Year's and Labor Day and I don't know what is here. Maybe something's going on, I'm not sure. Um, it's not good to assume that it's just a holiday. Um, let's say let's say this August one, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not super familiar with things going on in Gatlinburg, but if it was here in San Diego, I know that Comic-Con is going on this weekend. So I would expect that if I looked at this a week ago, between uh, today and Sunday, this is gonna be like, a, there's gonna see a huge increase in occupancy compared to surrounding dates. So that's how you would use that tool. Once you did that, you might wanna to go to your um, your market dashboard, or excuse me, your dynamic pricing tools and uh, adjust your settings accordingly. Another tool that I wanna show you is future occupancy bookings and can cancellations. So the cool thing about Price Labs is they don't just check uh, previous data, and you can set this to go back a lot further if you want to. Let's say we wanna go all the way back to right when COVID was going on, right? So let's just say, um, oops, I might have to scroll back. Or let's just say a, a year ago or so. There we go, that's a good date. And say, okay, good. Now we can see all the data, that is all the way back from 2020 or just below up just before that 2021 and all the way up to a year from now which is as far out as you're allowed to book on airbnb you can use the legend here and if you select these buttons they are buttons then you can apply and get rid of certain things that you you might want to look at might not want to look at Here's a good graph on future prices. This is a little bit better. So you can see that bookings are in the set that are in the 70th and 90th percentile. Um, so really, really bookings that are doing really, really well. Um, those are gonna be, you can toggle those here. Let's say you know that you're gonna crush it, right? Everybody in host camp should be crushing it. So you can go ahead and deselect properties that are in the 25th through the 75th percentile, um, at least for price and 
just look at this data. Now, if you hover over it, you can see certain dates and uh, the data that correlates with it and how what their price is. That, that's what that number is right there. So this might tell you, oh, if you're one of these properties around January, you might want to, <laughs> wow, that's really good, $1,700 a night. You might want to price it at $1,700 per night. I think you get the idea. I would suggest exploring through this and figuring out what the data tells you and then using it to adjust your market desk or it again adjust your dynamic pricing tool so that you can maximize your revenue here's some other okay data you can see that um, these bookings that are doing really well the really good really really good ones in gaddy town um, they're booked pretty much all days of the week of course there's going to be a little bit of an increase on the weekends i think most markets are going to see that but um, you can see this is good it stays fairly consistent throughout the week Okay, length of stay. So this might this is going to help you decide what you want your minimum night stay to be, or maybe your maximum night stay. And I'll explain why that might be the case. So you can see that here um, we have one day stays are in red. So not very many bookings are done one night at a time. That should come as a surprise to pretty much no one. But you can see most of these bookings are this this peach to I don't know this slightly darker peach I guess color. And um, that's going to be between three and six days. So you want to have your minimum night stay. It's like three days unless you want to be one of these bookings. Again, hover over the data, toggle these buttons, adjust it however you like. You can also make some adjustments in here. Just play around with it and see what the data tells you. You can also adjust the time period in which you're looking at, looking at things. So this is going to take us all the way way back here there's a lot of data here I don't know how useful this is going to be but you can just look at overall trends see look around this this time of the year there's a lot around this time there's not so much okay so I remember what I wanted to show you guys with the length of day state or length of stay dates so let's change our viewing window a little bit let's go over the past let's see this is looking a little bit more appropriate here Okay, perfect. That should be good enough. About a year. So why we might want to, or how we might want to use this tool. So let's say you know, we already know there's some popularity in the, uh, in the summertime and, and during the holiday season. And you might want to say, well, I don't want to have a whole lot of guests. Um, I want to keep my minimum stay high. And during the holiday time, you can say, oh, well, there's a, there's a huge increase in these really really long stays right these 15 to mm, looks like there's not really a whole lot of 29 plus but 15 7 to 15 night stays um and so you might want to set your minimum to, to seven nights at this point because you can say see that of, of all these listings that we're looking at um a good chunk of them are getting booked for at least seven nights um i would be careful that you don't miss the opportunity seen here but this would be a really pointless time to do a one night stay. It might really block up your calendar and block potentially block off a guest that wants to do something like this. Now, this is where the, uh, the nice thing about the futures comes in. So let's only focus on the future. So let's say, okay, we know that this holiday season, and we already know based off of this tool up here that people are booking holidays right now. Um, maybe not, all the way out to like Christmas and New Year's time so much, but definitely around Thanksgiving. So we're gonna wanna come back down here and look at Thanksgiving time and say, okay, there's a lot of bookings that are happening for mm, three to, it looks like six nights. You might wanna set your minimum to three nights. Um, a little bit of a increase here, actually probably less than over here. Um, and so you, you know, you're gonna wanna avoid at that point doing seven night minimums or 15 night minimums but if that's your thing then this is telling you there's still a good shot at doing that now why you might not want to set a, or why you might want to set a maximum night stay i'm using right now with my newest listing a technique called undercutting basically a way to generate a lot of reviews rob's talked about it before so you set your maximum night stay we set ours to five it's a five two house so we do want to have some some length in there if it, was, if it was my studio here in San Diego, I'd probably set it to um, four nights or three nights, something a little bit lower. I tend to have a higher turnover here anyway. But 
so we, let's say uh, here, this is telling us there's not a whole lot of things that are getting booked at a maximum or at, uh, three nights maybe, or at, uh, but there are some bookings happening a lot here um, at five nights. And so maybe it would not be a good idea to set my maximum to six. Uh, setting my maximum to, to six or or seven, this would really put me out of the running and mess out, miss out on a lot of opportunity here. So this would not be a good time to start undercutting. Okay, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to stop at policies and fees and how you should use this data for yourself. So maybe you're wondering, should I even offer a weekly discount at my place? I most of the time don't like offering the weekly discounts, but in case I was in question, I was questioning whether or not I should do it, I would look at this data right here. So for the Gatlinburg market that we have comped out, again, this is just for the comp set, we see that almost all of the bookings um, have a 0% discount. Make sure you pay attention to the axes here. So with the y-axis being percentage and the x-axis being percent discount, we know that 0% discount, 70% of bookings are, don't offer them with a base nightly price of $600. See, they added a little bonus for price there. So you would say, I don't need a weekly discount here. Perfect. Now for monthly discounts, you can see that uh, a good chunk of things booked, um, let's see, listings booked are... Well, I would be careful here. Base nightly price is zero. Something funny is going on there. So do pay attention to the data. I wonder if somebody is doing something weird there on their listing. But um, again, most of the listings are at 0% discounts for monthly discounts. Gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here. Okay, so for cleaning fees, you might say, what is an appropriate cleaning fee for the properties that are similar to mine? Well, you can see on the high end, you can get away with 274 to 312. There's quite a few listings that are getting booked there. Um, 391 plus, looks like that might be a little tougher sell. You might have a hard time getting bookings if you go that high. So I'm not saying you should negotiate with a cleaner. I think maybe you should negotiate with yourself whether or not you should get a cleaner that's worth that much money. Okay, moving on, cancellation policies. So here we say most of the listings that are getting booked have a strict policy, which means you don't have to have a flexible or moderate policy. You don't have to worry about that. Having a strict policy, you can get some of your some of your money back in some, um, some cases. So stick to a strict policy here, at least for this market. It could be different from yours. Okay, base number of guests. Now, maybe this is a good thing to look at as you're getting ready to buy a property, so you're doing comps um, for your market research, then you could uh, say, well, it's not, it doesn't look like it's a really good idea to have a place that has less than eight bookings. So it looks like they're pretty much limited to eight bookings. Um, and I don't want to do a property that has well, maybe it looks like you that's, that's your next best bet. But 12 is definitely the most popular. Again, remember, this is not across the whole market. It's against the comps that we set out. So if you want to look at the whole market before you want to apply the, a different comp set. In fact, let's just do that right now. Let's just do the whole Airbnb market between five and six rooms. And it's a good thing we looked, right? So... Here we can see that with the whole market, we definitely don't want to have less than eight. There's plenty with 12 plus. So Gatlinburg, it would not really be worth your time to get a house that can only house less than eight. And for extra person fees, you can see how many people are offering extra person fees. Pretty much nobody, so it would not be a good idea to say you're going to charge extra for an extra person. Okay, guys, that is about it. I know I said I was going to explain all this up here. I'll probably save that for a workshop or I'll talk to Rob and see what he wants to do or I will um, just cover another video. I don't know, but it's late. We're going to go to bed. I think it was plenty to, to digest for now. I know there's going to be a ton of questions regarding this, so go ahead and just play around on your own first. I encourage you to um, to experiment with this and, and make it count because I'll, let me show you something. So when you create Oops, what are we doing? When you create a market dashboard, here we go, I know what I'm doing. 
before if you if this is your first time with this account then your first dashboard doesn't cost you anything it's completely free the problem is you can't change the location so um, you can see I didn't even include my San Diego one in here first because I was too busy playing around I'm gonna have to generate that but um, you get that free for a month so if you want to play it around with it and see if you like it um, see what kind of things it's telling you then go ahead and do that but definitely make it count don't do what I did and just experiment with one just to show you guys because you're gonna lose out on ten dollars okay thanks bye